I gave the voices in my head a megaphone. By Hannibal. Read by Rat Overlord. Summary. Hitoshi, like any good friend, brainwashes Isiku's anxiety away for a day so that he can know some peace. The problem? Isiku has no fear of God or consequences. Isiku also has no goddamn filter. Title warning. One minor homophobia mention from Mineta. Hitoshi was intimately familiar with the wrong side of 2AM. More often than not, he greeted the hour with all the affection of a second cousin twice removed who kept asking for a personal loan. But Hitoshi was broke and indifferent and couldn't really keep accepting these kinds of calls. Wait, where was he going with this? He's had about four hours of sleep over the past three days. He's so goddamn tired. Usually, his insomnia had him wandering the halls of his new dorm alone with the occasional side shuffle past the enigma that was late night Tokoyami. Sometimes he'd hear strange noises from one of the random rooms of his classmates, but Hitoshi lives by the personal motto of none of my business when it comes to social interactions. The creed of champions and anxious people everywhere. But tonight in particular, he has an accomplice to his crimes against restful sleep. He had hobbled into the common area as soon as his room became too oppressive and stumbled across a hyperventilating Isuku on the couch. So here he sits, shoulder to shoulder, with one of the first real friends he made in this damn school, awkwardly guiding the shorter boy into a more reasonable breathing pattern, one that actually provided oxygen to the lungs. He highly recommends it. It takes a few minutes of wheezing before Isuku manages a characteristic apology and an even more characteristic heartfelt thank you. Like the fact that Hitoshi sitting beside him was a blessing to him. Like Hitoshi hadn't been in this exact same scenario two other times just this month. Nightmares again. He stops himself from rubbing Isuku's back like he's a small child. The urge was tempting, but he could control himself that much at least. Isuku blows out a harsh breath and scrubs at his face. When the sun rises, the dark circles under his eyes will be hidden and he'll be as energetic as ever. But here, next to his friend who conveniently matched the same shade of concealer as him, Hitoshi sees it all. The exhaustion, the panic, the stress. When isn't it nightmares? Isuku asks more to chastise himself than actually ask Hitoshi, because God knows Hitoshi did not have an answer to that one. Wanna talk about it? He offers, as always. They never really talk much when they have these informal, sleep-deprived, anonymous meetings, but it was the thought that counts. Isiku smiles, a little wobbly, but still pretty enough to be reassuring. <laughs> Wait, no, take that back, Hitoshi. Not pretty. Use your words. Different words. He blinks down at his hands and then reboots his mental systems. Isiku had already waved off his question when he was recalibrating, so they sit in blissful, awkward silence for several long minutes. You know... And oh, okay, Isiku was talking. Hitoshi could do the whole talking thing. Sometimes I wish I could just scoop out my stupid brain and put it somewhere else. Like what? He asks... Isiku shrugs as best as he can as he slouches back against the back of the couch. A normal person's brain? Hitoshi joins him in slouching because that seems comfortable as hell right now. He cranes his head back until he feels a satisfying pop from his spine and wishes he could just become liquid. Isiku is not as calm next to him. Calmer than before, yes, but his knee jitters at lightning speed. If Hitoshi didn't know better, he'd think the other boy's quirk was active. I feel like I should say something about normal people's brains being overrated. You know, out of solidarity. If asked to testify, Hitoshi would best describe the noise Isuku made as a snort. Normal people get sleep without almost dying over a stupid presentation. Is that what you're upset over? Isuku holds up a scarred hand and waves it side to side. Kind of. I woke up from a bad dream and tried to practice my presentation for Midnight Sensei's class today, but I stressed out. Why? Isuku mumbles something, chin to his chest, and Hitoshi squints. 
Everyone knows squinting increases your hearing capabilities. The champion of bone breaking obviously feels Hitoshi's confused stare because he looks up, pouts, and then repeats a little louder. She said I'm bad at talking to people. Hitoshi blinks, then blinks some more. Midnight told Midoriya, Mr. Uplifts Your Spirit, King of Forging Friendships and Rivalries, Sir, It's Your Power Todoroki, Isuku, that he was bad at talking to people? This kid? The one who'd have any villain spilling their life story with his Bambi eyes alone. The one who, if rumors were to be believed, turned a hero-hating kid into a fanboy and back-talked a serial killer in a fight? Multiple times? He raises a single eyebrow in challenge. The brow says it all. I get nervous for presentations or interviews. Isuku groans. He runs a hand through his hair. It's so hard with everyone just staring at you. You do kind of get rambly. Hitoshi concedes. He was there for the last interview practice the more social teachers put students through. Isuku was a stuttering mess, but at least Todoroki's deadpan answers and Bakugo's rage were entertaining enough to balance out the painfully awkward parts. Thanks, that's the anxiety. He quips. Hitoshi automatically says a low mood, but frowns. You know, I noticed something. You act a lot different with me on nights like this than with anyone else. Your sass has been criminally underappreciated by your friends. Our friends. Isuku says. Hitoshi lulls his head back and forth in what he hopes passes as agreement. He likes certain people out of the chaotic group of classmates he's been saddled with. He won't lie. Isuku's closest friends are alright, though the main instigators of a lot of shit with no one being any the wiser. Always hilarious to witness firsthand. He likes talking with Kaminari and Jiro. They're both cool, and they all share similar music tastes. Yamamo is queen, period but he's a little too intimidated to actually hold a meaningful conversation. He vibes with Shoji despite never having shared a single word, which makes him respect the multi-armed teen even more. He's ambivalent to a lot of the others. Then there's the motherfuckers like Bakugo and Mineta that he'd really rather not know personally. Why do they not get to experience the majesty that is your sheer disrespect and lame jokes? Wow. Isuku croaks. He cracks a grin before falling solemn. I guess... He starts. He brings a finger to his lips and mumbles away. Hitoshi, too exhausted to catch any of it. The green-haired hero student catches himself and smiles sheepishly at his friend. I guess I feel more like myself with you. Hitoshi exhales sharply because that was more of an emotional punch than he was prepared for. Feelings were icky and... Oh god... 3.47 a.m. I'm sure the Deku squad wants to actually know you, though. Nightmares and all. Isuka grimaces at the reminder of the name Ashido had dubbed their friend group several months ago. They might or do. It's not like I'm lying to them or anything. Shoto and I have had conversations like this before, but, well, with you it's still different. Does that make sense? All the bad parts in my head just don't seem so bad. You understand me. Hitoshi gurgles in embarrassment. He throws his arm over his face and thanks the universe for the dark hiding his blush. How does one respond to that? Your friends would understand. Ditto. He chooses the tried and true method of avoidance. And Midnight Sensei says you're bad at talking to people. Isuku smushes his own cheeks in a self-soothing gesture while not looking over at the flustered transfer student who still had trouble accepting any kind of praise or positive encouragement. Hitoshi knew his flaws, okay? I am, at least for stuff like presentations, and with strangers, and for a grade, and when I'm stressed, and... He tries to list more, but Hitoshi takes the arm from over his face and lightly bonks Isuku on the top of his head. You'll do fine on your presentation. I'm sure it's well thought out and researched, which is more than I can say for like a third of our class. Hitoshi's own presentation was on the symbolism of purple in hero arts and costumes. He has an appropriate amount of star wipes in his slideshow to feel confident enough to pass. Knowing Isuku, there is a highly detailed, informative, and unfortunately color-coded novella that he'll try and stutter through.
I just want the anxiety off for one day, I swear. Isuku moans despondently. His leg had never stopped jiggling all throughout the entire conversation. Hitoshi is even more exhausted looking at the bouncing foot. Hitoshi will admit he hasn't been helped by a lot of people in his own life, but when he is, he never forgets a debt. Aizawa's owed a blood pact, and potentially his firstborn with how much support and training the hero provided him with since the sports festival. Present Mike also gets his loyalty with his specialized lessons on improv and vocal changing device on his costume. Isuku? He offered a hand up, encouraged Hitoshi's dreams, then provided an incredibly detailed breakdown and training plan for his quirk. Hitoshi cannot and will not forget one of his first supporters. And, well, all Isuku has asked for is his friendship, which feels more like Hitoshi still owing the other boy something, but Hitoshi wants to help where he can. So, he sees a potential solution to Isuku's current problem. I can make that happen. What? Isuku cocks his head to the side, face still squished between his hands. Hitoshi nods in an attempt to look confident. I can brainwash your anxiety away for the day. Can you really do that? I've been getting a lot better at suggestions. Your notes are thorough. Aizawa has been having me practice. Isuku immediately lights up and tries to interrogate him on what he's been working on, but Hitoshi can keep a secret like a champion and will not be betraying Aizawa's trust. He values his life. All of the teachers have been avoiding the teacher's lounge during a specific time of day every day without even realizing it. Aizawa gets his uninterrupted naps, Hitoshi gets his laughs and training, and everyone's happy. You'd really do that for me? Isuku's tone is one Hitoshi's heard a few times after the more gruesome nightmares and ensuing panic attacks. When the other boy didn't want to talk but would still respond if Hitoshi needed to unsure of if things were real or okay, not confident in his welcome. Sometimes Hitoshi wonders about the bad parts of his brain that Isuku keeps talking about. They skirt around the darker parts of their issues, but on a rare occasion, Hitoshi can peer past the curtain. He hasn't made out the shape in the shadows, but he's putting some pieces together when he's not still following the mind your business motto. What can he say? Isuku inspires some curiosity with his contradictions. The tone is also one that prompts more of those, ugh, sentimental feelings. So he shoots a lazy finger gun at Isuku and smirks. Free of charge, buddy. The teen chuckles, a little nervously, before biting his lip and adopting the trademark, sure, why the hell not, look, that so many exhausted people own. Go for it. You'd be a lifesaver, at least for my art history grade. You sure? Yes, I trust. Hitoshi snags him before he can say anything else sappy. This is why he usually wanders alone on late night adventures. The emotion will make him break out in hives. He waves a hand in front of Isiku's face to make sure he's not pulling any bullshit with his own quirk and breaking out of control like the sports festival. Have they practiced with Isuku under Hitoshi's control since then? Yes. Would it make sense for Isuku to break out of the brainwashing he specifically agreed to? No. Will Hitoshi still check? Absolutely. Isuku is the wild card, especially with quirk shenanigans. Isuku's eyes remain blank. Hitoshi is almost tempted to leave him like this in order for the guy to relax for a second, but ultimately, this experiment will give him a full day of relaxation. He knows which he would prefer if he was Isuku. Now that he's here, he doesn't want to half acid. Giving the class supernova a nice day is the least that he can do, right? The poor teenager's been fighting off villains since day one. Once you go to sleep, you will stay asleep until your alarm. When you wake up, you will not experience any anxiety for 24 hours. The key to suggested brainwashing, Hitoshi has found, is that he has to imbue his words with specific intent and focus. The command still runs in the back of the person's mind because it is working towards a goal, not in order. A key difference that Isuku had highlighted in his journal entry for him. 
Hitoshi pushes as much chill vibe and confidence in public speaking as he can alongside the order. He has literally zero experience with the last one, but he knows Isuku will appreciate it. And then, in a moment of pure insomniac genius, Hitoshi wings it and finishes with, Just be true to yourself. Like some kind of pop singer or mental health guru. But Isuku is already blinking when Hitoshi loosens the control, so what's done is done. Did it work? The shorter boy asks. Hitoshi nods, suddenly weary with his quirk use at less than optimal conditions. His head hurts. You'll wake up anxiety-free for the day. Ha! <sighs> Isuku breathes out with a trembling smile full of gratitude. Thank you so much, Shinsokun. I, I really appreciate this. I'll go to bed then. See you tomorrow. Hitoshi mentally pats himself on the back for helping out his pretty friend. Isuku heaves himself up with a soft, genuine smile and offers a tiny wave goodnight before heading to the stairwell. Hitoshi watches him go and closes his eyes, still fused with the couch. He decides to catch whatever rest he can in the quiet common room area and let Hitoshi of tomorrow deal with his exhaustion. The Hitoshi of tomorrow has a confident Isuku to look forward to. The Hitoshi of the moment was finally giving in to the sweet siren call of sleep. It'd be fine, right? Yeah, it'd be fine. The first clue that something is off the next morning is Isuku casually walking through the class door before the bell rings, sans his tie. If the abomination he usually wore could even legally be classified as a tie. The top button of his shirt is even open. His smile is almost euphoric as he quietly greets his friends in his path to his desk. Ida turns red while holding back his concerned dress code lecture as Aizawa strolls into the room with a thermos of coffee as big as his head. Lucky bastard. Good, Good morning, morning sensei. sensei! The class dutifully greets with varying levels of enthusiasm. Aizawa simply grunts and nods before cracking his shoulders. Alright, we have some announcements. Aizawa reels off their updated training schedule for the week, a request from Lunch Rush to not throw fish cakes at each other in the cafeteria, again, and a joint training session the school has been setting up with Katsubutsu Academy. The last announcement is met with excited cheers. In the midst of the class yelling questions about details and issuing vague threats to people who aren't even in the room, Mineta rubs his hands together and bleats, I bet they'll have tons of babes. We need some fresh eye candy around here. Hey, Mineta. Isuku asks, turning in his chair to face the pervert behind him while Aizawa demands the class to calm down. Shut the fuck up. A pin dropping at that moment would have been as loud as a gunshot. The class stares in shock. Midoriya! Ida yelps after coming to his senses. Language! Oh, sorry. Isuku pulls a contrite face and turns back to Mineta before speaking in perfect Spanish. Sierra la puta boca. Hitoshi, who was already half asleep since the first bell rang, chokes on air at the sharp pronunciation. Aizawa stares down his number one nuisance with such an incredulous look Hitoshi might wonder if he was having an aneurysm. Ida sure looked like he was experiencing one. Hitoshi watches in fascinated horror as Isuku nods once at Mineta's slack-jawed self and turns to patiently look at their homeroom teacher. What the hell? Hitoshi is pretty sure that came from Kaminari. Dude! Kirishima breathes in either awe or fear. Hard to tell. He too cannot decide on what to feel in front of the oncoming train wreck. He abruptly realizes that he may have made a mistake last night in the most entertaining of ways. Aizawa pinches the bridge of his nose and visibly prays for patience. Hitoshi has seen that stance many times during training and wholeheartedly sympathizes. What's wrong with you now, problem child? Do you want the list chronologically or alphabetically? Isuku fires back, pleasant as anything. Bakugo abruptly turns around in his desk chair to scowl. What the fuck, Deku? Isuku slowly breaks eye contact to look Bakugo up and down, then huffs and looks back at the teacher in dismissal. Hitoshi has never seen anything sexier. Wait, no, stop that brain. This is not the time. It's crisis mode. 
Bakugo gargles out what passes as a scream, but Aizawa's erasure and the threat of the capture weapon brings the blonde from a raging boil to a dangerous simmer. Smoke starts to curl up from his hands, but Aizawa ignores it with practiced ease and continues his interrogation. Are you under the effects of a quirk? Oh god, Hitoshi was so in for it as the quirk in question. He didn't know what weapon he was releasing upon his unsuspecting class, but maybe if he was nice and repentant, they'd show him some mercy? Hmm, technically. Isuku folds his hands in front of him, eyes crinkling as he smiles happily. Hitoshi wheezes into his palms, distressed. He knew Aizawa looked at him, he just knew it. Hopefully, the rest of the class whispering or choking on scared laughter covered for him. Are you going to elaborate? Do I need to? A pause that lasted way too long for Hitoshi's sanity follows. He can almost see the exact moment their teacher decides that no, actually, today is not the day to handle any shenanigans. If... He grits out. You're not hurt or experiencing any negative side effects, then no. Are you? Nope. Isuku pops the pee in an adorably annoying way. Is Aizawa's eye twitching? Hitoshi is still too nervous to look up from hiding his face. He bet good money his mentor's eye was twitching. <sighs> Alright, let a teacher know if you do have any issues. And with that phrase, Aizawa has washed his hands of the problem child for the moment. Hitoshi knows he would kill to protect any of his students, but he'd also kill to have a vacation from the havoc that they tend to wreak. Isuku smiles, expression still a little looser than normal. Thank you, Sensei. You're the best. He chirps. Actually chirps. Hitoshi is getting emotional whiplash. Are we just going to ignore him telling me to shut up? Mineta chimes in. The entire class shuts him down with a yes. Even Koda was nodding. Isuku yawns. Anyways... Aizawa stresses the word. We will have more details about the joint training session next week, but it will take the second half of the day on Thursday. If you have any other questions, just ask me later. For now, stay quiet and don't cause a scene. He side-eyes the still smoking Bakugo, who scowls. The underground hero then proceeds to carefully place his thermos on the desk and crawl into his sleeping bag to pass the rest of the homeroom period in a mental health recovery nap. Half of the class immediately wants to join. The other half pounces. Bakugo growls and hunches over his desk. Hitoshi valiantly tries to ignore the increasingly loud questions from Ida and Kirishima by closing his eyes and pretending that he was somewhere far, far away from the chaos. He knows deep in his bones this was only the beginning. Midoriya, are you alright? If this quirk is affecting you, we should head to recovery, girl. Mino, bro, that was so manly! Oh my god, Midoriya! This is so weird! How'd you get hit by a quirk? Midoriya-kun, as much as it is warranted otherwise, we should try to treat our fellow students with respect. We are hero course students, after all. Aizawa-sensei didn't seem to care. Is the first thing Isiku says during the Inquisition. Regardless, we must act in an exemplary standard. I believe the quirk you are influenced by has hampered your usual demeanor, but rest assured, we as a class will help. We can find another tie for you as well. Don't worry so much about the tie, Ida-kun. The dress code is important, Midoriya-kun. It doesn't seem to matter when Kachan doesn't wear his. You talk to him sometimes, but it never sticks. Besides, I don't know if what I do to my tie actually complies with dress code. He snorts derisively at himself. Yeah, it's a little, um, wonky sometimes, dude. Kaminari chuckles nervously. It's hard to tie it, and I didn't want to struggle with it today. I never had a dad to teach me the proper method, and by the time I'd gotten comfortable enough with a father figure to ask, my hands don't quite work as they should. Isuku holds up his scarred and slightly crooked fingers while he rambles. So, if no one usually has a problem with it, the tie isn't a big deal today, okay? St still Ida stutters over the word as his metaphorical engine stalls. The other nearby students shuffle awkwardly in place. It's important! Isuku sighs. Ida-kun, you're one of my best friends and I treasure you greatly, 
but please don't lecture me about inconsequential rules when you're the first and only person here to attempt murder. What? Class press? Murder? I mean, I've thought about it. Todoroki murmurs to himself beneath the yelling. Hitoshi only hears because his desk is right next to the heterochromatic teens. He's overheard a lot of interesting non sequiturs from his deskmate, and honestly, this wasn't even the top ten. Soft same. Oh, that's Uranaka who's standing close to their desks. She'd typically be one of the first checking in on Isiku, but it seems her danger sense is top tier because she immediately backed away from the ticking time bomb that was surrounding the green-haired boy. She watches in amusement as Ashiro and Kamanari turn to Ida and ask what looks like extremely prying questions. Their class president stammers out excuses, face bright red and bad at lying. Isuku is also watching in amusement as the interrogation shifts away from him. Isuku, with his damned sixth sense, must feel all three of them staring because he glances over and fucking winks. His curly hair is wild as usual, and a smirk plays at his lips. Uraraka squeaks, and Todoroki freezes in place. Hitoshi hunches his shoulders. Oh no. He groans in gay panic. Oh no. Okay, what's going on? Uraraka asks. She's looking straight at Hitoshi. Damn observant people. I don't know. He tries. A dangerous glint enters the girl's eyes. Okay, okay. Look, um... Todoroki and Uraraka listen in fascination as Hitoshi quietly explains Isuku worrying over his presentation the previous night and his offer to brainwash him. It's really only to relax him so he wouldn't stress over his grade today. I was not expecting that, whatever that is. You were just trying to help. Todoroki comforts him with all of the verbal emotion of wet cardboard. For a boy who has slowly been growing into social awareness the past year, he still isn't the best at reassurances, but Hitoshi will take what he can get. Uraraka nods sympathetically. Ugh, oh, I should see if I can override the command. Hitoshi sighs. What? Why? Can you even unbrainwash someone? Todoroki asks. Why? He repeats incredulously. He manfully ignores the doubt in Todoroki's question. We're not even half an hour into the school day, and Aizawa-sensei has already given up from Midoriya's aura alone. I know how this is going to play out. Hint, there will be tears. Mostly his own. You just took away his anxiety for the day, right? That's a nice thing to do. Stopping it now is a little mean. She tries to explain. He understands. He doesn't like the thought of bringing Isuku's anxiety and stress back either. Isuku deserves a day off from his demons, and the idea of inviting them right back into his head leaves a bad taste in Hitoshi's mouth. Never mind the fact that he maybe sort of isn't sure how to do it anyway, but damn it, he's going to be a hero. He has to try to stop collateral damage. I'll admit, this would be nice of me if I hadn't fucked it up. Okay, it's not just anxiety. I suggested that he be true to himself, too. Wait, this is true to himself? Uraraka startles. She seems conflicted, wondering if what she's known about her friend has been a lie. Todoroki continues to stare at Isuku, but this time in contemplation. Isuku moves on from the crowd in front of him and focuses on his ever-present notebook, enthusiastically writing what Hitoshi is sure are world domination plans. I think this is Midoriya without any inhibitions. Todoroki states... He's still him, but less... Nervous? She finishes as he trails off. Fucked up? Hitoshi offers. Uraraka swats at him without a glance in his direction. Ow. I was going to say desperate to make everyone like him, but that seems too mean. The three pause for a second. Uraraka pouts. That's kind of accurate, though. Oh, Deku... I really feel like I should stop this. Hitoshi mutters. He's conflicted. No matter what he does at this point, he'd be a little guilty. Bringing back Isuku's anxiety after promising to help, or let Isuku's unfiltered brain roam free unsupervised and make the boy deal with the fallout. 
Uraraka gently places a hand on his shoulder. Her face is determined and bright. No, no, let it play out. He is abruptly reminded that this is the same group of friends who went off to save a kidnapped classmate with only some discount disguises. They all regularly push themselves past the point of exhaustion out of some weird cycle of encouragement and empowerment. Uraraka herself flung herself across cities with zero gravity to punch people in the face all while laughing. None of them were remotely normal. They thrived in the chaos. Tsuyu is the only sane one in the Deku Squad, he swears. He needs to buy her a fruit basket or something. He gapes at Uraraka for a long moment, trying to figure out how to organize his thoughts beyond just simply blue screening. You're actually freaking out about this. Todoroki has still yet to look away from Isuku's back even as he talks to them. Hitoshi clasps his hands together and presses them to his mouth. I don't think you understand. You both should know how much trouble Midoriya can get into on a regular day. You have a point. It'll be fine. Todoroki says blindly. Listen, he's a sarcastic little shit with a heart of gold, a genius brain, and enough anxiety to nerf a god. I just took away the last one. You realize I may have doomed us all? Uraraka hums doubtfully. I don't think it'll get that bad. No. Todoroki interrupts. His eyes are distant, remembering something fondly based on the soft smile on his usually impassive face. No, it'll get pretty bad. He finally looks back over at Hitoshi with passionate confidence. We'll still let it happen. Maniacs! All of them! If we're doing this, you're coming with me. If Isuku was upset at his own behavior tomorrow when he woke up, Hitoshi would not be the only one complicit. He can at least say that he put up a token protest and tried to stop it. Part of him wants to take this whole day back and keep it from going too far off the rails, protecting his friend's dignity and all that. The other part, the one that may make him an unofficial Deku Squad member, thinks it'd be nice to have some popcorn for the show. Well, no helping it, Uraraka says. She waves to catch Suyu's attention across the room from where she's talking to Jiro and Tokoyami. She beckons the frog girl to join them, and while Suyu gets up, a surprising Jiro following, Uraraka bounces over to the small group standing near Isuku. Disperse! Uraraka channels her inner Ida and chops the air dramatically. She grabs Sen Boy by the arm and drags him away. Kirishima, Kamanari, and Ashiro pout at losing their source of answers before turning to a touchy Bakugo and bemused Seiro. Okay, so... The girl starts when Ida, Tsuyu, and Jiro are standing around Todoroki's and Shinso's desks. Wait, when did Yoyorosu show up? He hadn't seen her approach, but she was suddenly there next to Jiro with a concerned look on her face, glancing at Isuku, who was only a few desks away. No need to worry. Deku's going to be fine. He had asked Shinso-kun to brainwash him for something, and it's only going to last the day. It's complicated. He starts. Jiro smirks and says, I already heard. This is funny as hell. Well, if Jiro already eavesdropped, he has no doubt that Shoji also knows the situation. Luckily, the two people with the quirks best suited to information gathering were chill and could keep their damn mouths shut. Hagakure, the other stealth expert, was a little too gossipy for Hitoshi's personal tastes. Will Midoriya really be fine? Ida asks, completely tense. Will this really only last a day? Hitoshi hears. Yes, it's only for 24 hours. He's already fine, Ida. Uraraka reassures. Ida's still flustered and slightly chagrined face says otherwise. Why 24? That's the longest I've seen it hold. At least for a one-time thought implant. He hasn't gotten the exact science down yet. How is it possible that you can brainwash anxiety away anyways? Jiro asks in a low voice. Hitoshi shrugs, not willing to disclose the full details of his suggestive brainwashing training. Tsuyu and Yayurosu immediately understand, like the queens that they are. So that's what happened, Gettle. We just have to power through and support Deku! Uraraka cheers. Ida's already frowning. Is there a way to reverse the effects? Nope! She firmly denies. 
like the chaotic little liar that she apparently is, Hitoshi's a little impressed. Jiro, sensible, down-to-earth Jiro, raises an eyebrow at him in mock skepticism, but then shrugs and accepts Uraraka's statement. She just heard how he's currently feeling about this whole mess, and apparently has decided to just go with the flow. Like he's not concerned for the mental health of the school. Oh, come on, Ida. Don't you want Dekakun to be happy and relaxed? Well, I suppose. Hitoshi tries not to snort. He doubts relaxation will be the end result. Ida is certainly not relaxed. It's fascinating that you can do this, Shinsukun. Yayorosu praised. Though, I must say, maybe it's more plausible that your quirk has ordered Midoriya-kun to act a certain way than altering a chemical imbalance. I'd love to discuss it more. If you're able to just turn anxiety off, you should talk to the business department about selling your services, get all- Suyu says. Teases? Wait, is she teasing him, or is she honestly offering advice? Some pocket change would be nice, but it sounded like a lot more work and socializing than he really wants to deal with. Technically, Shinsokun's quirk is just suppressing certain chemicals in my brain. Isuku's voice startles all eight students by suddenly cutting into their conversation. My body is following the command even if I'm not consciously able to do so. It's an interesting sensation. Honestly, I feel a little high. The green-haired teenager looks over at them from his desk with a peaceful expression. How much did you hear? Hitoshi asks, shocked. Isuku just grins. Homeroom's ending. The bell rings at that exact second, and Aizawa is already inching along the floor in his sleeping bag. Hitoshi watches the demented caterpillar escape with jealousy. Cementos's lecture is dry, as usual. Hitoshi actually loves reading in languages, but some of the literature their teacher picks for class could be written off as a medical sleep aid. Nothing against the hero at all, Hitoshi certainly respects the guy, but he'd engage more students with something other than the book equivalent of plain wheat toast. The entire first period passes with zero incidents, except for the occasional glance at Isuku. The teen's shoulders are completely tension-free, but his posture isn't his usual hunch over his desk. He's leaning back in his chair and taking notes at the world's most casual speed of light. Hitoshi swears he sees green sparks from Isuku's hands, but the rest of his body remains unhurried. Second period starts with ectoplasm collecting their papers on biology and DNA for this module of their science class. Who can tell me what makes a mutation quirk biologically different from any other quirk? Isuku immediately shoots his hand up and the teacher calls on him. Isuku smiles and waves his hands emphatically as he speaks. It's actually quite interesting, Sensei. There are different levels of mutation quirks that have been studied, and the general scientific consensus assumes that these differences can be traced along the DNA from a person's genomes. Most non-mutated quirks don't have the same genome sequencing. It varies for every individual, of course, but there's a noticeable sequencing difference between someone with an overall quirk mutation like Tsuyu-chan or Oshiro-chan and mutations that occur alongside the development of the quirk factor, like Tokoyami-kun or Hagakure-chan's. Hey, I don't have a mutation quirk, says the invisible girl. We are literally unable to see you, Isuku points out. But, but the quirk analysis in elementary said that I had an emitter quirk that's just always active. Hagakure-chan, no. Isuku tilts his head. That analyst was a certifiable idiot. If you had an emitter quirk, Aizawa-sensei would be able to turn you visible when he erased it. But since he can't affect your quirk factor beyond restricting your light flash attacks, you obviously have a physical mutation as well as a quirk factor. Just because you can manipulate one part of your quirk as if it were an emitter does not classify the full scope of your abilities the same way. Your quirk is light refraction mutationism. Please update your paperwork and tell me the name of the analyst so that we can publicly shame him. What? Hagakure tries to say, but just ends up squeaking. They can't see her hands, but her sleeves are flailing. <clears throat> All right, then. Ectoplasm clears his throat. Do you have anything else to add, Midoriya? Only that the prevailing misconception about mutation quirk stems from being under-researched and that speaking on a cellular level, every quirk is a mutation quirk as it physically mutates some part of the brain or body in order to activate the quirk. 
we simply classify quirks based on their attributes or functions and have found these minor genetic differences between emitter, mental, and physical mutation quirks to further establish said differences. Of course, as I said, there is a standard deviation in a person's DNA when they have a visible mutation quirk versus something like telekinesis. More research is needed to truly understand the development of these physical mutations in the womb since other quirks tend to quote-unquote activate around a certain age, but more scientists are veering away from mutation studies due to the growing quirkist beliefs. Isiku info dumps. Also, the chapter on hereditary quirk genetics in this textbook is incorrect. I can bring you the correction, sensei. Damn, tell him. Sarah breathes out in the stunned silence. Ectoplasm stands in place for several long seconds before sighing, nodding once, and continuing the lesson. He doesn't call any suku for the remaining period. Their next class is English, but as they're bracing for the sheer vibrancy of present Mike, they're greeted with Aizawa's defeated stare when he comes through the door. Um, where's Mike, sensei? Ojiro raises his hand. Aizawa blinks at him for a second before sighing. The idiot tried to come to work feeling sick. He's been sent home to rest, so we're covering his classes. Is he all right? Asks Jiro, who's made it no secret that present Mike is her favorite teacher and role model. Aizawa nods. Recovery girl said it was a simple stomach bug and he should be fine with rest and medicine. He'll be back tomorrow. Several teens sigh in relief, Hitoshi joining in quietly. As a rule, he doesn't like loud people, even if he's surrounded by them, but present Mike is an honest and kind teacher who is gentle with the quieter members of their class. He's Hitoshi's second favorite adult in the school. Ayama raises his hand. Are you going to teach us English, sensei? Absolutely not. Aizawa responds immediately. Hitoshi knows that the hero is fluent in English. Whether from his own studies or just osmosis through his best friend, he's not sure. He has the qualifications to give them an English lesson. Then why are you the one substituting, Aizawa-sensei? Isiku asks, straightforward. Ida almost flinches at the perceived rudeness. Aizawa pointedly does not look at Isiku and just grunts out, This will be a self-study period. And shakes out his sleeping bag. Hitoshi smirks at his mentor treating this opportunity as yet another nap time. Isuku chuckles as well. The class collectively sweat drops when Aizawa disappears behind the podium, then immediately scrambles to do everything but study with the free time that they have been miraculously given. Hitoshi debates napping as well. Isuku stretches, and Hitoshi does not look. The green-haired boy stands from his desk and walks over to Hagakure with a leisurely pace. Hagakure-chan, I was serious about checking up on your paperwork. There's also a lot of resources that I can provide you about dual emitter mutation quirks. Thanks, Midoriya-kun! She says with an awkward chuckle. She fidgets in place. Though I'm not sure how to feel about my quirk being completely wrong after all of these years. Isuku, who probably would have apologized profusely and stammered on a usual day, just shrugs and nods. Understandable. Let me know if you have any questions, okay? Having to suddenly understand changes to your quirk can be really daunting. If anyone would know, it's the boy wonder himself who kept revealing secret aspects of his quirk it felt like every other training session. Kirishima bounds up to the boy, interrupting whatever Hagakure was about to reply with. Hey, Mino bro! That was awesome earlier! Do you think you can analyze my quirk too, please? Oh, me too! Ashida adds. I... I would like to know as well. Tokoyami quietly states. Isuku lights up. He goes to his bag and pulls out a notebook before returning, flips it open, and cracks his knuckles. I thought you'd never ask. What proceeds is the politest and most helpful smackdown Hitoshi has ever witnessed. He excuses himself from that party. It wouldn't matter much since he'd recently gotten updates for his quirk analysis just two weeks ago per one long-winded text in the middle of the night. Then again, Isuku might have even more to add, but Hitoshi is content to simply watch. Isuku flies through compliments without a hint of shame, praising his classmates' techniques and abilities. He's enthusiastic about Kirishima's unbreakable mode, Kaminari's new directional gear, and Tokoyami's flight ability by using Dark Shadow. He goes through all of his classmates surrounding him as they gravitate towards the group, 
Bakugo scoffing by himself in the corner, and Mineta blatantly ignored by everyone. Then Isuku goes straight for the jugular, or the heart of his curiosity. He points out flaws in Kirishima's fighting style and openings that he leaves. Also, actually look into protective gear for your costume. I get that shirts might be restrictive with your quirk, but you won't always be able to react to a sneak attack, and an exposed chest just screams attack me to villains. Kirishima's enthusiastically nodding when Isuku grabs his hands. Also, please stop saying everything is manly. Please. I don't think I have time to really dive into gender identity and pigeonholing yourself or others into certain masculine stereotypes as a personality trait, but remind me to lend you some books later. Kaminari-kun, you cannot go for the all-out attack as it leaves you incredibly vulnerable. Aizawa-sensei was right that it's difficult to save others if you are incapacitated, and I think you could also benefit from that advice. Have you tried to use capacitors or limiters so that you don't overload? Like batteries. Maybe work on your physical combat abilities instead of your quirks so that you can effectively tase people? Your close-range combat abilities are somewhat lacking. Oshiro-kun, seriously look into weaponry. Maybe a gun? Villains are expecting to watch for you and your tail, or your fighting style, but they won't expect a bullet or a knife. You always need an advantage with a physical mutation quirk like yours. You're very intuitive, and with a little practice, you could be a very efficient apprehension hero. Momo-chan, I mean this in the nicest, least Mineta way possible, but you need to eat both more and change your costume. There are so many weaknesses. You don't have enough fat stores to properly use your quirk, especially with the large-scale cannons you're so fond of, which we'll get into later. But without those extra lipids, you'll find yourself running low in a drawn-out battle. Also, you know support can make a costume with your DNA so that your creations will phase right through the fabric instead of needing to take your shirt off, right? Actually, Hagakure-chan, did you know that about your costume? Here, let me give you Hatsume Mei's phone number. I swear, no one cares more about durability or underage protection laws. At least half the class receives a thorough analysis that balances both their strengths and smack talks their weaknesses. Hitoshi spots their classmates honestly taking notes or writing down Isuku's suggestions in a stupor. At least when they're not staring into space completely blindsided or questioning their life choices. Hiroshima and Kaminari in particular are flabbergasted and scrambling. Some of the other teenagers receive seemingly random comments or weird questions. Do you think if you concentrated on a light enough pH level you can make acid that causes hallucinations? Like a literal acid trip? He asks Ashido, who lights up. Hitoshi can almost feel Aizawa's migraine from here. Could you control Principal Nedzu? He asks Koda, who blinks rapidly. Since he's also an animal? He has an intelligence quirk, but your quirk is essentially brainwashing for animals. Do they remember what you asked them to do? Do they have opinions on it? You're very kind and polite, so I'm sure they don't care, but have you tried on animals with quirks? Do you think Principal Netsu could communicate with you without the human language? I'd like to measure your strength on both sugar and off of sugar. Oh, and with different types of sugar too, for science. He demands of Seito, who can only nod perturbed. He literally walks up to Shoji's desk and pouts. You're too tall. Honestly, I'm offended. Which causes everyone to laugh. Shoji, in an unprecedented move, simply stands and offers Isuku a hug. The shorter boy squints his eyes, but accepts, hugging back. Shoji wraps six arms around Isuku and gently squeezes. Hitoshi knows how Isuku feels about hugs, really touch-starved that he is. He shudders the tiniest bit, but if anyone notices, no one says anything. Shoji holds the boy for a few seconds longer. Isuku clears his throat, a little confused, but happy. All right, I'm not offended anymore. Uraraka and Hagakure giggle, a few others chuckling as well. Shoji just releases Isuku and crinkles his eyes, smiling behind his mask. He returns to his seat as Isuku narrows in on Aoyama, saying something about cheese consumption and low-level lactose intolerance. But Hitoshi narrows in as Shoji leans back in his chair, the mouth on his arm almost smirking. He notices both Togoyami and Hitoshi looking at him. Hugging always calms down short people. Dark shadow peeks out beneath Tokoyami's cape and cackles while Hitoshi snorts. The rest of the students surrounding Isuku laugh and talk amongst themselves, still keeping everyone close by. Shoji's shoulders shake in silent laughter. Hitoshi thinks having friends suits the other boy. Tokoyami, I have so many questions about you and Dark Shadow, you have no idea. Isuku approaches after leaving Aoyama sparkling but a little green in the face. We will do our best to assist. 
The bird-headed boy says solemnly, Your guidance is greatly appreciated. Dark Shadow grins at Isuke. What Fumi said! They screech loudly, Stupid! Bakugo huffs and mutters under his breath, but still characteristically loud, Who the fuck even cares about Deku's bullshit? Dark Shadow scowls and Isuku pauses. Kachan, acting like a dick won't make yours any bigger, so shut the fuck up unless you have something constructive to say. Oh, shit! Ashido whisper screams. Bakugo immediately stands up, apoplectic. Kirishima places a strong hand on Bakugo's shoulder, who violently shrugs it off. Do not start a fight. Aizawa intones from behind the podium. I will expel all of you. Most of the class hold their breath while Bakugo vibrates angrily for long, long seconds. Kirishima hovers nearby while the blonde takes deep breaths and scowls at his desk. Isuku watches placidly as Bakugo huffs, digs in his bag, and pulls out headphones. He turns on music and folds his arms like the ornery bastard that he is. Hitoshi spares a second to remind himself how little he actually cares. Hitoshi also marks a tally for his mentor. Aizawa is obviously checked out from whatever he thinks is happening with Isuku to spare his remaining sanity, but hey, he hadn't stopped the verbal humiliation, only Bakugo's meltdown. He's been telling Isuku that Aizawa is secretly sadistic and laughs at their pain for a while now. Isuku never doubted him, but it'll be nice to have another example. Isuku enthusiastically starts asking questions to both Tokoyami and Dark Shadow once it's clear Bakugo won't try to interrupt again. He lulls a bit when he's distracted by writing their answers down. Do you do this for everyone you meet? Jiro asks, fascinated at the full notebook still in Isuku's hands. She's sitting on Ashido's desk. Not really. I started analyzing hero fights, so I have a lot more heroes and villains than people we know. But all of your quirks are just so interesting, I couldn't help myself. What kind of heroes do you have? Do you have Crimson Riot? Kirishima's sparkling so much in excitement that Aoyama looks a little impressed. Isuku flips through his notebook. Hitoshi sees Todoroki startle out of the corner of his eye. There's a mad scramble to his pocket and to pull out his phone. The other boy surreptitiously glances between his phone and Isuku for several seconds before he pops the phone up against his notebook, camera facing the other boy, and turns to Hitoshi. Shinzo, I need a favor. Hitoshi raises his eyebrow. The last time Todoroki asked someone for a favor, there were a dozen exploded eggs all over the dorm kitchen. Yeah? Can you ask Midoriya what he thinks of Endeavor? Your dad? The disgusted nose scrunch that Todoroki responds with only lasts a nanosecond, but speaks volumes. Hitoshi prides himself on being able to read people. He's worked hard on learning psychoanalysis skills to get even more hard-headed idiots to respond, so he's always known Todoroki has some kind of issue with his family. Who wouldn't with a famous and famously hot-headed father? But... The look on his face makes Hitoshi wonder just what kind of issues might actually be going on. Then again, not his personal business. He'll maybe possibly do some digging, though. Insomnia does lead to all kinds of late-night research binges. Why can't you just ask Midori herself if you really want to know? He asks. Todoroki looks away. Is that a blush? Can the thermodynamic wonder even do that? I would consider it a favor if you could ask for me. Huh. Alright, not like it's a big deal for me. Like, apparently, it is for you. He wants to say, but he refrains. He tries to curb some of his more asshole tendencies around his classmates. Well, Explodo Boy and Sour Grapes are the exceptions. Besides, this is simple enough to do for his quiet desk neighbor, and Hitoshi thinks he should maybe rack up some karma before the day's over if just to balance out what he's caused. Hey, Midoriya! He catches Isuku's attention. How about Endeavor? More than one person quickly looks over at Todoroki, who immediately schools his face into a pleasantly neutral expression. A pause in the air. The meanest smile Hitoshi has ever witnessed spreads across Isuku's lips, and Hitoshi was bullied for several years. <laughs> Isuku suddenly chortles like a deranged man. I fucking hate that bitch. Oh my god. 
Midoriya-kun. Damn! Go tell, mon ami. Hitoshi realizes that he may have unleashed a beast. Their classmates only continue to feed it. Isuku proceeds to dismantle the former number two hero systematically and without mercy. Hitoshi forces himself to look away from the angrily gesturing Isuku to the rest of the class who are slowly listening with shock and horror. He never liked Endeavor much as a hero, too used to brute force, and, if Aizawa's stories were true, too disparaging towards underground and support heroes. Isuku himself outlines several instances of Endeavor not working with a team or respecting other heroes, how rude and aloof he could be towards victims and fans alike. He actually quotes news footage and interviews of the man, calling him a, quote, narcissistic garbage dump who took the trash and decided to spew it from his mouth, end quote. Endeavor's property damage numbers are astronomically high. His criminal injury rate is even higher. He's as destructive as the number of villains captured in Japan in the last seven months combined. I have a whole spreadsheet. It's an honest wonder how he hasn't been arrested yet. I didn't know any of this. Yayurosu exclaims, horrified. Ida has a scandalized hand pressed to his face. Koda is scowling. Um, Todoroki, are you okay? Saro asks. He's awkward and just as disgusted as the rest of the class, but is kind enough to check in on the other boy, who is startled out of his dreamy mooning over Isuku. None of this is really a surprise, if I'm honest. Todoroki lifts one shoulder in a half-shrug while everyone stares at him. All of this is public knowledge, you just have to know where to look for it. Isuku points out. Unfortunately, there's a lot of heroes out there that have horrible records with no consequences. Something needs to be done, but too much is swept under the rug for limelight heroes. Like what Stain was saying? Kaminari asks, then immediately tenses when both Isuku and Ida turn to glare. Jiro swats his arm. Shit, sensitive topic. I'm sorry, Ida. The class president visibly composes himself. As we've discussed before, I can somewhat understand Stain's ideals and appeal. I accept your apology, Kaminari-kun. I don't. Midoriya mutters. Kaminari squeaks in fear. Midoriya-kun, it's all right. My brother would not want me to be petty over a classmate's words. Oh, Ida. Hitoshi thinks. Your brother isn't here right now. He can almost visibly see Isiku agree with that thought as he frowns and turns back to Kaminari. Stain was narrow-sighted and stupid. He in no way tried to actually change anything. He was a killer for killing's sake, and whatever grand plan he thought he had would have imploded in his noseless fucking face if he used one ounce of logic. Huh? The electric cork user meeps. I don't, um... As Isuku starts passionately talking about the concepts of psychopathic prejudices and the fallacy of being judge, jury, and executioner with implicit bias, Hitoshi zones out and tries not to fluster himself. He hears, give a bad name to vigilantism, and all might fanboy gone rabid, which is painfully ironic coming from Isuku, not that Hitoshi would ever say that out loud. He glances over at Todoroki, who is not paying attention to the discussion about the literal serial killer he'd encountered, but instead smiling softly at his phone. Worth it. He mumbles to Todoroki out of curiosity. The other boy nods. Hitoshi raises an eyebrow and nods at the phone. Why'd you record that? Bluntly as ever, Todoroki simply turns the phone to show Hitoshi a group chat, saying, I wanted my siblings to experience it. Hitoshi has literally nothing to say beyond more questions, this time about Todoroki's mental state, so he just glances over the text. A Fuyumi has sent several lines of emojis, many of which are laughing or crying. A Natsuo has at least three keyboard smashes. A new group of texts pop up as Hitoshi is reading. Natsuo. Goddamn greenie, pop off! Natsuo. Shoto, marry that boy. Natsuo. Or I will. Hitoshi snorts when Todoroki reads that. He leans on his hands and unfocuses his eyes, listening to the lull of Isuki's voice and the rare interruption of someone asking a question. 
He forces himself to zone back in before he can fall asleep. When he looks around, he sees Todoroki staring at his phone, the screen angled just so that Hitoshi can glimpse the contents. He's looking at rings. Hitoshi thunks his head to the desk and has to cough into his elbow to muffle his laughter. This boy is a whole trip, he thinks as he tries to mask his chuckles. His amusement is cut short by a loud, ha, causing him to look up. Uraraka is smirking at Isuku, who snorts. Bakugo is glaring over from his desk, headphones off once more. I just wanted to know if Deku-kun had anything about Bakugo. What brought this up? Hitoshi asks no one in particular. Todoroki doesn't respond, still browsing through his phone. The other closest person, Shoji, just looks at him briefly before shrugging. Excellent. Fountains of information, all of you. He talked about all of us and what we're doing wrong. Might not be fair and also talk about you, Bakugo. The gravity girl ignores the pointed growl sent her way. Aw, oh, come on, Blasty! Ashiro, bless her, tries to joke. What's the harm? The shitty nerd's not gonna say one damn thing I don't already know about my quirk! Then I'm sure he has something to say about your hero personality. Uraka exclaims. Or maybe some embarrassing stories? You've known each other for forever, after all. Don't you fucking dare, Deku! Bakuga warns. He's gripping the edges of his desk too tightly to be good for his hands. He is summarily ignored. Uraraka, like the professional shit-stirrer that she is, just faces Isuku and bats her eyelashes. Well? Where to start? I have a whole list of grievances about Kachan. There is the time he broke my All Might figurine in preschool when we were playing, the time when he made me eat his mom's cooking because he felt bad wasting it, but it tasted awful, the time he vomited on the couch but blamed me and I had to clean it. Oh, and there's a the time he burned my notebook. Shut up, shitty nerd! Those are pretty tame. Isuku says, resting his cheek on his palm, leaning on the desk and watching Bakugo from the corner of his eye. I have so much more. Shut the hell up! Bakugo screams. Mm, no, I don't think I will. Shut your damn mouth before I make you! Bakugo threatens and ignites a single palm. The class, who had been watching the exchange like a high-speed tennis match, tense in anticipation. Isuku's on his feet so fast he's a blur. His own palm slammed down against the desk. Everyone flinches at the sudden noise and movement. Hitoshi almost flinches from Isuku's feral grin. I'd like to see you try, Ka-chan. He enunciates each syllable with purpose, and a chill sweeps through the room. Bakugo flushes red and grinds his teeth. Aizawa drags himself out of his sleeping bag to glare at both boys as Bakugo lets out an unholy screech of frustration. What did I say about fighting? Do I need to repeat myself? They both sit back in their seats one calmer than the other. Isuku watches Bakugo from the corner of his eye, but doesn't make any further comment. He still smirks at the blonde boy, though. Aizawa's face practically screams that he wants a vacation. Maybe Hitoshi should be nice and bring him a latte for the next training session, or they could go to a cat cafe afterwards. He's conflicted about the obvious annoyance on his mentor's face. There's really only so much an exhausted man can take, isn't there? No more confrontations happen during their not-quite-English period. Ashiro and Hagakure distract from the tension and cajole the class into making get-well cards for present Mike. Hitoshi draws a doodle of a bird, having heard Aizawa call his best friend a cockatoo many, many times. Yayurosu creates craft supplies, and he notes that Isuku's card is incredibly well-sketched, and also a horrifying contrast of neon colors. Present Mike will love it. Aizawa disappears from the room like a ghost before anyone can ask him to deliver the gifts. Midnight strolls into class next, smiling and reminding the students about their presentations. Many groan, a couple cheer, and Isuku actually seems excited to speak in public. Hitoshi relaxes a little at seeing the goal of the brainwashing coming into fruition. The art history teacher grins and connects the projector. Ida volunteers to go first, robotically going through armor motifs and different art pieces, Aoyama riveted and sparkling. 
A few others present their reports on different paintings or propaganda pieces. Isigu then offers to go next, leading Hitoshi to realize the 15th mistake he'd made in his effort to be a good friend. Isigu, without a fear of public speaking, is magnetic. He practically prowls to the front of the class. He clicks through his presentation, yes, on an all night series of artwork, with passion and not a stutter in sight. Midnight is against a wall, clasped hands in front of her and squealing in delight. She's almost sparkling as her most anxious student commands the room with nothing but his words. Isuki musses with his hair when clicking to the next slide, head tilted to the side to highlight his jaw. Hitoshi isn't the only one who has to gulp or take a deep breath. Uraaka is bright pink, Jiro is pointedly staring at her desk, and Aoyama is biting his lip. Todoroki stares, open-mouthed. The confidence Isuku holds when he gestures with his hands and grins in delight at the entranced class is almost overwhelming. He can practically see Oshiro and Saro questioning everything they knew about themselves and their love lives. Hitoshi is too mentally exhausted for this collective level of gay panic, but there's no escaping. Not when Isuku beams and asks, Any questions? And absentmindedly licks his lips. Great job, Midoriya! Midnight praises after several seconds of the class rebooting. It's like a whole new you! Channel this confidence for your PR lessons, cutie! Isuku laughs sheepishly and nods. He sits down and the rest of the class continues with at least one person always staring at Isuku who is enraptured in all of the following presentations. More than one classmate gets flustered beneath his intense stare. When everyone's finished, Midnight offers both compliments and criticisms just in time for the lunch bell to ring. Ugh, oh, I'm starving. Isuku groans, popping out of his seat and heading towards his friends. He enthusiastically leads them to the cafeteria. Everyone follows in morbid curiosity, half still under Isuku's spell. Kirishima has enough wherewithal to notice Bakugo stomping away as the rest of his friend group follow the entire class to a single, long table. Kirishima glances between the energetic teens before sighing and following his blonde friend. Hitoshi wonders if Kirishima knows he's too good for this world. The Deku squad claims the closest seats to Isuku, but the rest pile in wherever they can. Todoroki practically teleports to Isuku's right side. Tokoyami sits next to Hitoshi and picks at his apple slices, feathers somewhat ruffled. Hitoshi bro nods a dark shadow who peeks out from behind the boy's back. I loved your presentation, Mito! Ashido compliments. It was very well done! Ida adds, his cheeks are still lightly dusted pink. They darken when Isuku smiles and thanks him. They chat about the presentations for several minutes while everyone grabs food and starts eating. Speaking of fashion choices, Ashido says when they talk about the wilder costumes during the start of the quirk era that Yayurosu presented on. Mino, do you think you'll be keeping this look? Mm hmm. Isuku responds, mouth full of rice. The whole open collar sexy vibe you have. Sexy? He asks, eyebrows raised. Ashido nods enthusiastically. Yeah, I'm totally digging the style. It does look good. Oshiro mumbles at the end of the table. Isuku hums, poking his meal with his chopsticks. Mm, I might. I don't like how my ties usually turn out, but I didn't want to cause any issues about the dress code. Ida glances away, still remembering the confrontation from the morning and embarrassed. It's definitely better than your attempts at tying. Kaminari teases. I'll do your tie for you. Todoroki leans in. He's watching Isuku intently. Any day, just ask. Ooh, very smooth! Dark Shadow notes. Hitoshi glances at the sentient quirk and then to Tokoyami, who is face palming. When did Todoroki get game? Jiro asks Kaminari. The electric boy is grinning and whispers to her, both of them giggling. Well, 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 if it isn't the losers of Class 1A! An obnoxious voice interrupts before they could hear Isuku's response. Ah, uh, not him! Hagakure groans. Morima only sneers back. Uraraka scrutinizes the new arrival. Actually, I'm kind of curious about what will happen. 
She trails off. Hello, Monoma Kun. Ida greets stiffly. The smirk on Monoma's face reminds Hitoshi just why he's glad he was put in 1A. Not that the students of 1B weren't all right. He actually was pretty cool with most of them. He, Kuroyuro, and Sen have a group chat for dark humor and memes. Everyone was competitive, but ultimately laid back. Yes, 1A also has an egotistical blonde who needs to always prove he's the best, but at least there's Isuku. Speaking of, his green-haired friend is side-eyeing Monoma as he prattles on about their upcoming joint training and how 1B will obviously do better against Katsubutsu than your dysfunctional class. Ugh. Isuku huffs and points at the blonde with his chopsticks. Monoma-kun, you have such a versatile quirk and have enough charisma to be a top hero. Of course I do, I- Too bad your inferiority complex is shoved so far up your ass you'll never be able to walk out of our class's shadow. Monoma pales. Uraka presses her hands to her mouth to muffle her snickers while Ida gapes. Asui turns her face away, shoulders subtly shaking and leaning against Uraraka. Hitoshi can't help the low whistle he gives while Todoroki makes heart eyes at their friend. Marry me. He mumbles. It's half aware at best. Todoroki hasn't looked away and Hitoshi is hard pressed to believe anything less than a nuclear explosion will distract him. Only a few people had heard Todoroki's quiet outburst, Isuku included. The smile that spreads across Isuku's face is new. It's not the bright and happy grin that warms their hearts. It's not the determined, somewhat nervous grin from training or facing down villains. It's not even the playful or teasing smirk he's been showing off throughout the day. It starts slow, syrupy, and sweet. There's a hint of warmth high on Isuku's cheeks and a sparkle in his eyes. There's no typical flustered blush, just an edge of pink against his freckles, an inviting curl on his lips. Todoroki's breath literally hitches. Hitoshi's chest is uncomfortably tight. He resists the urge to rub his collarbone. Must be cholesterol or something. It's not like he wants Isuku to smile like that at him. That's weird for friends. He's not the world's foremost expert on friendship, but he's pretty sure about that one. Wait a second. Monoma tries to interrupt before Isuku could respond. More than one person has to tear their eyes away from that smile. Isuku glances over at the other boy and clicks his tongue. Not now, Monoma-kun. The adults are talking. Kendo walks up when she spots the frozen Monoma standing in front of their table and gaping unattractively. The rest of the table is too busy laughing to hear her approach, but they quiet when they see the kind girl. She grimaces in apology and grabs the back of the blonde boy's collar, shaking him like an errant puppy. Sorry about him. Is he bothering you? Hi, Kendo-chan. The class president blinks at Isuku's warm greeting. No need to apologize for him. You've done nothing wrong. Besides, none of us here actually care about his opinions in our class. It does get repetitive, Jiro says from the end of the table, chin on her hand. I've stopped paying attention. Shoji nods next to her, the mouth formed on his arm, grinning. Like a chihuahua barking at wolves. Hitoshi draws. Isuku turns and smiles at him, amused. Victory. All right. Kendo looks between the frazzled Monoma and the entire table of giggling hero students. Hitoshi can understand her confusion. Usually, the class reacts with exasperation or attempts at violence in certain explosive cases. She decides to just shake her head and drag her classmate off as usual. Monoma comes back to himself as they start to move, spluttering something incomprehensible, but no one pays any attention. Yayurosu smiles compassionately at Kendo and invites her to join them for lunch sometime. The redhead nods, once again surprised, and leaves them to eat an egotistical, blonde-free piece. The rest of lunch is spent with easy companionship and teasing. Every so often, at least one person is glancing at Isuku, whether it's in admiration or amusement, as he continues to talk animatedly with Tokoyami and Saro from down the table. Lunch is a little more raucous, a little more chaotic, but Hitoshi finds himself smiling into his drink. He finds his earlier worries about Isuku's new attitude disappearing. 
Yes, Isuku is causing mayhem with words alone. Yes, he will probably regret some of the things he said come tomorrow, but that's just because he's generally a kind person who usually has a filter. But the more he watches Isuku interact with their classmates, the more he realizes that, yeah, this is actually Isuku. He's known Isuku as a sassy little shit when sleep-deprived, but he's still kind, still passionate and smart and enthusiastic, more willing to stand up for himself, which can only count as a good thing. Hitoshi is used to having to carefully skirt the line between intimidating bullies and not causing trouble. Isuku carries himself like he'd barely tried the first option, which surprises him since the boy is a bundle of gremlin energy wrapped up in All Might merch. So yeah, he knows how much anxiety can restrict you. To think Isuku carried this much? Hitoshi is feeling definitely better about his actions. Besides, life at UA is already so goddamn weird. Something like this might as well happen. It's important for hero students to expect the unexpected, or some other fortune cookie bullshit Aizawa likes to spring on them. Maybe it would be a reality check for certain people. The rest of the day is comparatively calm until their double period of foundational heroics. All Might comes into the classroom with his trademark grin followed by a racking cough. Hitoshi is honestly concerned for the guy. He respects the hell out of the former number one, but can admit he felt resentful at the perfect limelight hero image. Getting to actually know the sweet, kind of dumb man that is Yagi-sensei has taken some work and more pity than one might expect. He knows All Might gave up his life, time, and health to protect others, and this is what he's left with. Hitoshi will admit on his more introspective nights that he's not sure he would have lasted nearly as long as the hero does with his injuries. So, he's come to act the same towards All Might as Aizawa does. Exasperation at the dramatics, but secret concern and checking in on his well-being. Isuku had told him before that most of the class carries a handkerchief for their teacher, and that the faculty all mandate breaks for the hero to rest between classes. Hitoshi just packs a paw print covered hanky and reserves most of his sarcasm for his other teachers. Not to say that he doesn't roll his eyes just a wee bit when All Might starts to read off their technical lesson plan on coordinating search and rescue from flashcards. He's only human, after all. The second half of their heroics class is a training exercise, so they pile out of the classroom to change into their costumes. The class loiters around the entrance to Ground Alpha, the closest fake city to the school. All Might has yet to arrive from the control room where he was setting up whatever activity he had for them. Ida was leading the teens and stretching, most following along with the loud instructions. More than a few people keep looking at Isuku, incredibly flexible for someone with his muscles. Hey Momo, uh, can you help me? I have this nasty knot in my shoulder and none of these stretches are helping. Ashiro asks with a frown when Ida is finished. Yayurosu was a surprising contender as a future chiropractor. She'd walked on many a classmate's back to pop their spine and often recommended certain acupuncture procedures alongside specialty teas for Hitoshi's sleepless nights. Hitoshi had accepted the tea, but not the needles. He trusts Yayurosu, but he and sharp stabby things don't mix. Mineta's salivating immediately at the conversation. His demented chuckling gets everyone's attention. The girl's shoulders hunch. Ashiro scowls and turns to her friend. Maybe we can head back into the locker room. Yayuro suggestures for Ashiro to escape the great pervert, but Mineta whines loudly. Oh, come on! Why can't you give us a show? Mineta rubs his hands together and leers. Uraraka steps towards the two girls, Asui following and glaring at the creep. A shadow falls over the boy from behind. I think I speak for everyone here when I say stop being gross, you raggedy bitch. Isuku looms over the tiny boy with his arms crossed in a serious expression. What the hell? It's not gross to when I see two hot babes rub each other. Mineta protests. Come on, what are you, some kind of homo? Jiro and Ashino both squawk in offense. 
Shoji Asui and Yayurosu wince. Hitoshi hears Uraraka's knuckles crack and a snap of forming ice from Todoroki. Ida is spluttering in outrage while the rest of the class wears dark, angry expressions. Even Bakugo is glaring at the pervert, who has turned to face the class with an oblivious, What? Isuku's face doesn't change. He simply stills, bowing his head so his fluffy bangs block his eyes. Hitoshi is seconds away from angrily crushing Mineta's self-esteem before green lightning arcs around Isuku. He rears a single leg back before kicking Mineta in the reinforced metal diaper. The impact sends swirling gusts of wind across the ground. The entire class watches a screaming Mineta disappear into the sky. Uraraka whistles and slow claps. Hmm, I'm getting better at distance. Isuku mumbles to himself, hand to his forehead to block out the sun as the purple dot fades past the boundaries of the training ground. He remains completely calm. Should we check on him? Kirishima asks, less than half-heartedly. Tokoyami shakes his head. He shall be fine. Waste the time! Dark Shadow chimes in. If Hitoshi didn't know any better, he'd say Kirishima's nod was relieved. Several minutes later, All Might joins the suddenly carefree group of teenagers. Ashino is rotating her shoulder, pain-free, while the rest of the girls circle around Isiku, laughing and smiling. In fact, the crowd has circled around the bright boy even tighter than in the classroom. Everyone except Bakugo is talking and happy when their teacher clears his throat. We will be working on your rescue techniques under attack. Your experience at the provisional license exam may have given you a glimpse of protecting civilians during battle, but a hero must fine-tune their multitasking. You will be split into groups to rescue dummies in different parts of the city, but you will also be under attack from a different team. The team with the most rescues will be the victor. All Might grins at the resounding enthusiasm. This shall teach you teamwork, strategy, and rescue training. I highly recommend you decide who will be rescuers and who will be battlers. I have divided you up into five teams. With your numbers, one team will have five people instead of four. You don't need to worry about that, Sensei. Uraraka interrupts gleefully. The teacher pauses, somewhat flustered. He scans the group of teenagers. Isuku smirks, chin to his chest. We're short someone, hmm? Ahem, <clears throat> ahem. Ida answers, pushing his glasses up his face and pointedly not looking at his teacher like a bad liar that he is. Mineta has gone to recovery, girl. He is not feeling well. Oh, I see. Very good, young Ida. Thank you. All right, we will have five groups of four. As for your teams, here! Whatever deities exist and are watching him must bless him, because he's on Isuku's team with Seito and Koda. Todoroki and Bakugo are on separate teams. Kirishima has his own. Hitoshi isn't a betting man, and of course he wants to win the exercise, but with Yayurosu and Uraraka on the last team, he can't help but want to put his money on them. Isuku bounds over to Hitoshi and Seito while Koda walks up, but All Might calls Isuku over to him. Ahem, <clears throat> young Midoriya, could I speak with you for a second? Isuku waves the others to go first. Hitoshi hesitates when he sees All Might looking concerned. He decides to stay close in case his friend is in trouble, so steps away to hover near the entrance of the city. He's technically out of sight, but able to hear when All Might asks Isuku about something he's heard from other teachers and how the teen's been affected by a quirk. I'm okay, All Might, I promise. Isuku says, it's nothing serious. I'm glad to hear it, my boy. I was concerned to hear you were acting differently. It's not that different, I don't think. I can't really tell. Isuku laughs a little sheepishly. Hitoshi can almost imagine him rubbing the back of his neck. It seems that even with his confidence boost and missing anxiety, he still has some of his nervous habits. Hitoshi is about to turn away when he feels another presence close to him. He looks over his shoulder to see Todoroki also hiding behind the wall and staring at him. What are you doing here? He mouths silently. Todoroki just shrugs. Young Midoriya, will you be up to this exercise? Of course, I have to make you proud after all. All Might coughs. My boy, you always make me proud. 
Both Hitoshi and Todoroki glance at each other. Maybe he should step away from what is obviously becoming more sentimental than expected. He's about to nod his head to Todoroki to get him to leave with him when Isuku hums happily. Mm, thanks, Dad. Hitoshi wheezes while Todoroki blue screens. All Might splutters. D- Dad? Well, I mean, you're not the best teacher, if I'm completely honest, and I feel like you could use some help with actually working with kids, but you're still my favorite mentor and father figure. I've seen you that way for a while. Hitoshi whips his head around to peer past the concrete wall and see Isuku grab All Might for a hug, pressing his face into the man's bony chest. All Might is obviously overwhelmed, tears gathering in the corner of his eyes and belatedly hugging back. He murmurs something to Isuku, too low for Hitoshi to hear, but notices how Isuku squeezes tighter. I knew it. Todoroki hisses behind him. Hitoshi turns back to shush him. I knew it. He repeats louder. Why the hell is there a manic look in his eyes? Did you hear something, my boy? All Might asks Isuku, who tilts his head. Isuku disengages from his mentor and turns in their direction. Hitoshi scowls and slaps a hand over Todoroki's mouth, dragging him away from their hiding spot. Pulling Todoroki all the way to the designated start was a credit to Aizawa's upper body strength training regimen. Hitoshi spares a mental second to mock his previous noodle arm self, then another to mock Todoroki for his half-zoned out look even after Hitoshi releases him. What was that? He can't help but ask. First rule of eavesdropping is to not yell and give away your position. I was right, Todoroki says. Midoriya's All Might's secret love child. Hitoshi just... He just can't right now. How he hadn't heard that particular theory from his deskmate was a mystery in itself. For someone who was obviously into all things Isuku, one would think he'd share the wildest theory he had about the boy. Hitoshi stares at Todoroki, who looks completely pleased with himself. How many people had he told this to? Did Isuku know? Hitoshi hates to admit it, and will never say it out loud, but he can actually see it. The smile, the names of his ultimate moves, how close the two seem, especially after that interaction. Stop! Nope, he's not going down this rabbit hole. Okay... He draws, shaking his head. Life motto. Must remember his life motto. Good job. It's time to do the exercise, though. Go find your team. Hitoshi pushes Todoroki to walk away towards his own team's starting point in the city. Hitoshi pinches the bridge of his nose for a solid 30 seconds before Isuku appears and walks towards him. He lights up when he sees Hitoshi and beckons him to follow to their team. Seito and Koda patiently wait for the duo to arrive, and immediately all three turn to Isuku, who's already grinning. I have a plan. Koda-kun and Seito-kun will be one team, mainly focused on rescue since Koda can locate civilians and Seito can handle debris. Both of you are strong, so I trust you'll be able to handle a fight, but you'll be focused mostly on defense. Shinzo-kun and I will also scout to fight against the other teams. Most will be focused on rescue operations or expect the entire team to move together, but this way we can divide and conquer. Between us, we have a great balance to handle any issues. Koda blushes at the compliment while Seito grins brightly. They agree with the plan easily enough and Koda conscripts a few birds to investigate the city. They decide to work through an entire section, spreading out as needed. When the signal bell starts, they split into their pairs to head into two directions. Seito and Koda check in on their comms each time they find a dummy civilian. Isuku and Hitoshi both save a dummy each, but they cause much more chaos beyond the exercise goal. Hitoshi yanks Hagakure into his capture weapon, Isuku wrapping the issued capture tape around her wrists. They tag team against Kaminari by psyching out the blonde with Isuku's stealthy quick attacks and Hitoshi jumping in with his voice modifier. Oshiro is sent flying by his tail with one of Isuku's air blasts. Kirishima trying to catch him, only to end up also blasted away. More than one building may be destroyed. Hitoshi can't stop grinning. The glee on Isuku's face fits well alongside his usual demeanor. It feels nice to work together. To win. 
They make it through half the city just by attacking the other teams, but as they run into a deserted area, they're ambushed. Hitoshi and Isuku bolt out of the way of an exploding wall. In the smoke, Bakugo stands with a scowl and flickering palms. You're going down, shitty Deku! You've been acting up all day! Oh, hi Kachan, here to kill us? Hitoshi chokes on his laughter. Isuku is blasé about repeating one of Bakugo's standard catchphrases, even raising an eyebrow expectantly. Bakugo aims a large explosion at them. Both boys separate, Hitoshi backing farther away from the consequential fire. He glances around for Bakugo's teammate, but the blonde is alone. How typical. Isuku bites his lip, finger to his chin. He looks Bakugo up and down. You're getting better, but you're nowhere near where you need to be in order to be the number one hero, or a decent person. I strongly recommend anger management sessions. Bakugo runs forward to kick at the space Isuku used to be. His explosion spins him into a howitzer impact, following after Isuku who bounces on a building's wall. Isuku takes a chunk of concrete from the ground and hurls it like a discus at his classmate, who explodes it to pieces and screams. What? You think you're so tough? You got hit with a quirk and now you're better than me? Huh? Hitoshi sighs. Are you done? Bakugo wisely doesn't answer, just glares. He's about to try using his quirk again, mimicking Isuku's voice, when the other boy snorts. <laughs> yes, actually. What? I do think I'm stronger than you, Ka-chan. Isuku says, and flicks a super-powered finger at Bakugo, powerful wind making him skid backward. You! Bakugo doesn't even get to finish his sentence before ricocheting forward with two large explosions. Hitoshi leaps backward, capture weapon at the ready, but Isuku simply lunges to meet the blonde in the middle, immediately in Bakugo's personal space and kicking him upwards. Shinso, go scout the area and back up Koda. Isuku commands. Bakugo barely manages to avoid his punch. I can handle this. He radios in for his team, only for Seito to confirm that they've gotten most of the dummies in the sector. Hitoshi decides to drag himself up to one of the nearby rooftops to get out of the blast radius, but he can't help himself from watching under the pretense of providing backup. He notices Saro and Todoroki in a building several meters away, shoring up the walls with ice and tape while Jiro carries out a dummy. All three of them glance over at the smoke wafting from his direction. You're not stronger than me, Deku! You're just a useless weakling! Bakugo pants, bruised and bleeding. Isuku leisurely stands across from him, hand on his hip, which only enrages the other boy more. Kachan, do you remember how upset you were during the sports festival because Todoroki-kun wouldn't use his fire against you? What about it? Bakugo snarls, pushing himself forward. Isuku dances around each attempt to grab him. Remember the temper tantrum you threw at ground beta instead of getting therapy? Another wind blast from him and Bakugo crashes into a street lamp. Oh, sorry. I mean, remember our previous fight? Hitoshi raises an eyebrow as he stays low. He sees Todoroki's team walking closer and informs his own teammates over the comms. Seito confirms while Isuku just sighs and clicks his tongue at his old childhood friend. I was only using 8% of my power. Bakugo freezes. Isuku rests both of his arms behind his head, staring thoughtfully. Here, I'm using about six. You damn bastard! Bakugo screams. His face turns bright red beneath the dust coating it. He flexes his fingers before flying into the air and barreling down like some demented missile. His exploding punch misses Isuku as the boy darts upward, right behind Bakugo, and suplexes him into the ground. Isuku glares as Bakugo continues to yell curses and grabs the taller teen's collar to drag him upright. You know, Kachan, it would be an absolute shame if All Might ever found out exactly the kinds of things you said to his favorite student and successor. The exact words that came out of your mouth every day. Tell me. Do you think he'd be pleased with you? Isuku brings Bakugo's face even closer. Do you think he'd call that plus ultra behavior? Bakugo swings another exploding fist. Isuku maneuvers his feet to spin both of them and then yeets Bakugo across the training field. 
The boy tries to course correct with a blast, but tumbles through the dirt. Isuku stalks forward. Hitoshi can't stop gaping as the other boy dodges Bakugo's next attack with ease and kicks out his midsection. Bakugo retches before Isuku slams him to the ground back first. All you do is scream. Do you not get tired? Do you not just want to have a peaceful day and not go ape shit over the smallest things? I'd like some peace. And it's only because we used to be friends and because I do care about you that I haven't forcibly gotten it. Fuck you, Deku! Bakugo rasps. He's scrambling his hands into the dirt to gain leverage, but Isuku's knee on his chest prevents him from moving. He lets off an explosion, but Isuku simply diverts his wrist and harshly pins it to the dirt. So, Kachan, I'll say this once. Do better. And you know what? There'll be more ways to get what you want than through violence. I don't want to kill you or anything if I use more than 8%. So how about this? If you don't start acting right, I'm telling Uncle Masaru about what you told me to do in middle school. Bakugo completely stills under Isuku's poisonous green eyes. Well, Kachan? He asks, smiling politely and gripping Bakugo's wrist tighter until the blonde boy looks away. Hitoshi takes everything back. That was the sexiest thing he's ever seen. Judging by the rising steam coming off of Todoroki, who just arrived in time to see the end of the fight, he agrees. Bakugo opens and closes his mouth for several seconds. Hitoshi isn't close enough to see his facial expression, but the boy's shoulders are tenser than steel. Isuku huffs and lets go of the blonde, almost carefree in his posture. He lifts a hand to his earpiece, but All Might's voice rings out across the entire city. All of the citizens have been rescued. Students, please return to the entrance. Isuku grins and ignores Bakugo as he walks towards the assembled Saro, Todoroki, and Jiro. Hitoshi scales down from the building and joins the group. Saro and Jiro glance back at Bakugo, who is carefully pulling himself up from the crater on the ground. Need a hand? Saro asks his friend. Fuck off, soy face! Bakugo says woodenly. The students gather at the entrance, some with scrapes and some still pulling capture tape off of them. Bakugo is the last one to arrive, limping. Isuku showers Koda and Seito in compliments when he sees them, ecstatic about their good work. Their team nets second place, but had outstanding teamwork, according to their teacher. Hitoshi was right to mentally bet on Yaoyorosu's team. She, Ruraka, Shoji, and Aoyama decimated the competition. They move towards the locker rooms after All Might offers them constructive criticism. The teacher sends Bakugo to Recovery Girl for his injuries. His friends are shocked when the blonde only looks down and trudges off silently. Isuku drags Hitoshi forward with his team, also complimenting him on his ambush techniques and the rappling he did out of the building with the civilian dummy. Todoroki follows behind them and catches the blush on Hitoshi's face at Isuku's enthusiastic praise. Hitoshi stops when he feels a cold hand on his wrist. He startles and turns to see Todoroki, who quickly retracts his hand. Shinso. Todoroki says. The rest of the class continues forward, disappearing into the locker room. The two boys stare at each other awkwardly in the now empty hallway. Yes? He asks, when it becomes clear that Todoroki is just going to stand there. The boy squints and looks at Hitoshi from head to toe. Take a picture, it'll last longer. He grumbles to himself. Are we love rivals? Um, what? Excuse me? He says, not at all high-pitched. You like Midoriya, so we must be love rivals. Curse Todoroki for being this straightforward. It was often hilarious and even more refreshing. On rare occasions, it could even be called cute. But this kind of blunt statement wasn't reassuring when he was on the receiving end. For a brief moment, Hitoshi wants to go with his gut and just deny. There's no way he likes his friend, right? A cute boy who might have a little sex appeal and laugh at his dark humor in the middle of the night. One of his first true friends who decided to stick by him and actually help him instead of just wishing him well. Someone he feels he could confide in about anything. 
someone he'd break the carefully constructed lines around his quirk for in order for them to have one day away from their bad thoughts. Shit. Hitoshi knew himself, and he knew he wasn't emotionally mature enough for a relationship. He had fucking trauma, okay? No doubt Isuku did too, and doubly so for whatever was going on with Todoroki. So it would be easier to just deny Todoroki's accusations. Yet the thought of saying, No, I don't like Isuku, made his chest feel so tight. Seeing Isuku cozied up to someone, loving someone, while he could only watch... What the hell was he supposed to feel about that? He won't deny that he's fonder of Isuku than he is of other people. But to be someone's rival? Someone who would no doubt encase him in an iceberg if he tried to make a move? The insomniac already wants to sigh in defeat. That sounds like too much work. He mutters, his fingers brushing through his gravity-defying hair, resisting the urge to tuck on it self-consciously. Todoroki frowned, speculative. What does that mean? Are we not love rivals? It's whatever. He tries. But you do like Midoriya. Hitoshi groans. I mean, I obviously do. I have eyes. And then, again, after today, at least half the class was also now in the Isuku Appreciation Club. He tactfully doesn't say that. Todoroki frowns. Look, don't worry about it, okay? With that, he awkwardly shrugs and goes for the locker room, self-conscious and eager to get his gear off to end the day. Todoroki follows, and Hitoshi can feel the boy's eyes on his back. I'll be watching carefully. Todoroki says quietly, as they're the last to leave the locker room. Isuku is walking ahead, surrounded by Asui and Tokoyami, engaging them in a heated discussion, Ashido keeps pestering him for a piggyback ride, grinning. What, you're gonna be there any time he and I are alone together? Hitoshi can't believe this. Did he just gain a stalker? When he wasn't even planning on making a move or confessing? If I have to. Hitoshi blinks into space. This class is so weird. Hell, his friends. And yes, Isuku wins. He'll admit they're his friends are also so weird. Just do what you want. Thank you. This is a very non-confrontational rivalry. Hurry up, you two! We're heading to the dorms for a movie marathon! Uraraka calls before Hitoshi can facepalm. The two boys look at each other, one more resigned than the other, and hurry their pace to join the group. I'm ordering pizza! Yayurosu raises a hand, smiling. We can have a party! It's a school night! Ida reminds them, conversations devolving into arguments over whether it would be okay to stay up late. I have some things I'd like to discuss with you too, Midoriya. Todoroki says, more than one person jeers and teases the boy. I'd like your input on a project. Sure thing! You coming, Shitsuken? Isuku asks. The afternoon sun shines off his hair, another heart-stopping smile. Hitoshi squints and nods. A text alert jolts him from the entrancing sight. He pulls out his phone to see a message from Aizawa. Dad Zawa. I have two incident reports from Recovery Girl and about 40 texts from Midnight and All Might alone. I didn't want to know, but now I'm making this your problem. Spill everything or I swear to God. Hitoshi grimaces at the message before looking up. He follows after Todoroki and Isuku, the latter gesturing wildly and beaming. He starts typing as he follows them to the dorms. Isuku wakes up slowly, reaching up to grab a piece of paper stuck to his cheek. He opens his eyes and immediately regrets everything in abort's mission. His head feels like it was Detroit smashed, and the weak early morning sunlight pouring in through the curtains must have a personal vendetta against him. He takes a deep breath and tries to open his eyes again with a little more success. He's in his bed, surrounded by dozens of loose papers and a few pens. He shifts, and... Okay, that's a person. He squints over his shoulder to see Shoto sleeping with his mouth open and drooling. Trying to turn back around, he notices Hitoshi also on the bed but sitting against the wall, one hand resting on Isuku's ankle while the taller boy snores. He squints at the paper that was stuck to his face. 
It's covered with three sets of handwriting, outlining an attack plan. Oh, it's outlining alibis and an ambush plan for Endeavor. Hmm, okay, unexpected, but something he can work with. Then the hazy confusion from sleep clears and reality crashes into him like a semi-truck. And so do his memories from the previous day. Oh god, the things he said, the things he did. He picked a fight with so many people. He's always thought about snapping back at Kachan since well before middle school. He's always wanted to smack Minetta in the face when he got too gross to handle. He's always wanted to make someone sit down, shut up, and listen to him for a goddamn once. But he would never thought he'd do it. Especially like that. He grabs his pillow to muffle his groan. Or suffocate himself. Whichever happens. Second-hand embarrassment has always been a problem for him. First-hand, up-close embarrassment? Just take him out back and put him out of his misery. He tries to ignore the panic building in his chest. He'd sassed his teachers. He'll have to leave school. Damn, Isuka really likes school, though. His not-so-internal freakout must wake Hitoshi and Shoto, probably the panicked wiggling. Shoto hums sleepily in a not-at-all-cute way while Hitoshi cracks his neck and stretches. Not as cute, but hello, collarbones. Oh, look, now he's perving after his closest friends. Fantastic. He's noticed they're attractive. All of his friends are. Curse his bisexual little heart. But now was not the time. Now was escape plan time. Isuku? Shoto asks quietly. Who's Isuku? There's no Isuku here? He squeaks. Hitoshi chuckles, then yawns obnoxiously. <laughs> what? Are you changing your name and going into hiding? Isuku drags the pillow from his face to pout at the lavender-haired teen. His plan was that see-through, huh? Stop freaking out. Easier said than done! He wheezes. Shoto frowns and rests a cool hand on Isiku's forehead. Whoa, okay. Deep breaths. Hitoshi says. He squeezes Isiku's ankle without realizing it. The grounding sensation helps him focus enough to even his breathing. He stares at the ceiling for a moment. Want me to brainwash you again? Hitoshi jokingly offers. Both Isuku and Shoto freeze and turn to him in unison. Wait, no, I'm not actually going to do that. It would be easier. Isuku admits. He liked feeling confident. He liked silencing all the negative thoughts in his head. He liked being Isuku, not worthless Deku. Shoto frowns while looking at his own hands. If what happened yesterday was truly him, wouldn't it be fine to brainwash him again? Hitoshi groans. It's a short-term solution. Based on his reaction yesterday, the quirk is literally altering his brain chemicals, and the only suggestions or commands I've done on people alter their conscious minds, not their literal neurons. That's not healthy for me to do. I'm not a doctor, and I'm not as reliable as medication. If he isn't consistently brainwashed, then he'll have a huge fallout when the consequences of suppression wear off suddenly. I'm not risking it. You know a lot about this kind of stuff. Shoto says curiously. Having a quirk like mine means I got really into learning about brains and stuff. That makes sense. Thanks. I live for your approval. Hitoshi draws. Isiki sits up and fidgets with a loose thread on his pillowcase. Is it really so bad? He mumbles. I trust you. Hitoshi curses under his breath. He looks away, hiding his suddenly pink cheeks, not that Isuku can't see them. Shoto grumbles unintelligently. Is he glaring at Hitoshi? That's weird. Isuku could have sworn that they were becoming friends, especially with how close they seemed yesterday. He's pointedly blocking the memory of the breathy Marry Me from yesterday's lunch, the grin on Hitoshi's face as they ran through the training city, the soft laughter between all three of them as they ran through the hypothetical murder endeavor scenarios. Friends. 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 Your mental health is more important. Hitoshi states with a note of finality. Isiku huffs. Fine. I'm still going to run off to go live in the mountains. You both are welcome to come visit me. I'll be coming with you. Shoto says, matter of fact. Isuku does not squeak and blush. You're not in trouble or anything, Midoriya. Easy for you to say I punted Minetta! 
and it was great. Hitoshi insists. Shoto nods enthusiastically. Yeah, okay, it was kind of great, but he still assaulted another student. He'll have to deal with Kachan, too, and that just... He wasn't sure he had enough mental energy to handle that fallout. Kachan's gonna murder me today. Isuku moans and falls back onto his pillow. He can try, but I doubt he'll succeed. Shoto tries to reassure. Considering you wrecked his entire shit, he should stay out of your way for at least a few days. I don't want him to hate me. He mumbles. Didn't Kanchan deserve a smackdown? Yes. Did he want to ruin any chance of working together in the future? No. He's tried so hard already, even when Kachan wouldn't do anything in the return. Yeah, well, we'll deal with it, okay? You don't have to do anything alone. Hitoshi rubs the back of his neck. Shoto nods, smiling softly. Isuku can't stop the emotional tears that gather in his eyes. He pushes them down, not eager to start his day off crying. These two are literally the best. Okay, that sounds good. Hey, don't you both have to get ready for class? He redirects, giving them a wobbly smile. They both glance at each other and reluctantly nod. Hitoshi pats his shoulder and Shoto grabs his hand to give it a quick squeeze. Blushing, Isuku waves them from his door as they both head to the elevator. When they're out of sight, Isuku breathes out and rubs his hand. His shoulder feels tingly. He shakes himself and sits back on his bed. His phone is lit up with notifications, so he takes a moment to check his messages. Ochako. Good morning, Deku! How are you feeling? Tenya. Midoriya-kun, I would like to invite you to join me on a morning run today. I feel as though I should apologize for not seeing how much your struggles have been affecting your mental state, and I wish to check in with you. Please know you can always rely on me if you need anything. As a hero student, and more importantly your friend... One of five messages. May May. Hey, Ten Million! Your friend said you recommended them to me for gear! Nothing but the best from Hatsume Company! Double emoji. Thanks! Make sure to come by the lab for your new babies, too! Should be done this afternoon! Isuka smiles at his friends. He stretches and gathers clothes for the day. He might be able to meet with Tenya if he hurries, but then he continues to read his remaining messages as he walks around the room. Eraser head. Problem, child. Come to Nedzu's office before school starts. You're not in trouble, but we have some things to discuss about yesterday. Unknown number. Hello, Midoriya Kun. When you come to my office, please be sure to bring your delightful little notebooks. I would be greatly interested in discussing your analysis more in depth. Eraser head. Also, don't listen to a word the rat says. If you respect me as a teacher at all, you won't turn to the dark side. Yagi, in parentheses, dad. My boy, make sure you are well rested. If you need anything, let me know. I wish to have lunch with you today if you are available. Smiley face. Eraser head. And make sure to stop by Recovery Girl during the day. Eraser head. We're getting you anti anxiety medication. Isuku short circuits at the last text. He doesn't have the emotional capacity to freak out about meeting Principal Netsu just yet. The principal wanted his notebooks? Did he like something about Isuku's hobby? How did he find out? Okay, maybe he was starting to freak out. Aizawa sensei seemed so exasperated yesterday. He took one look at Isuku's personality and noped so hard he was almost catatonic. He had no doubt based on the texts that his teacher understood what exactly had happened to him. Didn't Hitoshi tell his mentor about his anxiety? And here he was, offering Isuku help even if it would negatively impact his sanity. Isuku sniffs and clutches the phone. He's blessed to have great teachers for once in his life. He sends a text to Tenya confirming that he can do the short run, but that he needs to be in school early. He confirms with all of his friends and mentors that he is alive and well as he stumbles around his room to get ready. He's looking forward to going to class. Maybe more anxious than usual, maybe not. Maybe Mineta would act worse. Maybe Kachan would act better. Like Shoto and Hitoshi promised, they'd figure it out. He pulls on his sneakers and runs out the door, humming the song Ashido played last night in the dorms. 
I'm a savage. Ah, classy, bougie, ratchet. Howdy, howdy, fellow rats. Hope you enjoyed this little extra special video to celebrate 500 subscribers. It's always good to see my army of rat minions growing. I can practically sense my world domination plans coming into fruition. But on a serious note, Thank you guys for all of your support and all of the love that you send me and my work, it really means a lot. Also, to all of you Rei Siku fans, before you go rabid and foam at the mouth out of disappointment for your loss in the poll, I will be podficking that too pretty soon. You've just gotta stay tuned. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, feel free to leave a like or comment down below, because I always love hearing from you guys. And make sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date with whenever I post. And here's your little daily reminder that only savages and bad bitches drink water. So unless you want to be a thirsty little shit like Minetta, go drink some water. Oh, and I have some bloopers. Enjoy. Come on, what are you, some kind of homo? <laughs> you know, as a bisexual, Minetta would make me a lesbian out of spite. Hmm, I'm getting better at distance. Isuku mumbles to himself, hands to his forehead. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that's so freaking funny. My boy, you always make me proud. Oh, that's so sweet. I fucking, I love Dad Might, that's precious. Curse his bisexual little heart. <laughs> Why is that so relatable?